Yeah, it's interesting that Jeremiah is referred to as the weeping prophet, and I think part of there's really two reasons for that. Part of it is the grief that Jeremiah senses over the destruction of the people and uh, this terrible judgment. He's seen what God is going to do. Uh, in Jeremiah 9, he pictures death climbing through the window. And so uh, even in that chapter, Jeremiah says, I, I wish that my head uh, were a fountain of, uh, uh, were a fountain so that I could weep constantly for my people. As a prophet, Jeremiah doesn't just proclaim God's message. He embodies God's message and in a, in a physical way allows the people to see what God feels about the sorrow uh, of having to judge them and having to destroy them. Um, in another sense, Jeremiah experiences what the people are going through, and so he feels their grief and their sadness as well. So in a sense, he's really kind of a mediator between uh, God and Israel, and he feels both what God feels and what Israel feels. A second reason why Jeremiah is a weeping prophet is that in chapter 11 to 20, we have a number of prayers uh, from Jeremiah to God or that are called Jeremiah's Confessions. And basically in those prayers, Jeremiah pours out his heart to God and uh, expresses his frustration, his anger. God, why have you called me to this ministry where I've done nothing but be faithful to you? And as a result of that, I've experienced all kinds of persecution. Uh, I, I have people that are plotting against my life. God, why have you done this to me? And even in one place, he accuses God of being uh, a deceptive brook who has sort of tricked him into going into ministry. So part of it uh, as well is the, the, the sorrow, the sadness, the grief that Jeremiah feels uh, over the persecution and the opposition that he's experienced. And I think for both of those reasons, uh, understanding Jeremiah as a weeping prophet is a, is a very good way to envision his ministry.